Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 Napoli Save. We're here, obviously, looking at the dynamics and the happiness screen. And there's a concern. Quite a lot of people's morale is in the okay, fairly poor, slightly poor region. And there's a couple of reasons for it. And it's not it's nothing to do with matches. First up, Camilo Zuniga. He is a team leader, so he is one of my main people in this whole dynamics pyramid thing. And he's annoyed because I've signed a new player and that new player is potentially kicking him out of the team. And it's Hugo Mallow, who I signed on my Southampton career and he was amazing. So I thought, why not? Let, let's keep some form of pattern going. Let's sign Mallow again. So he's come in for quite a lot of money. Eleven and a half million pounds, which to be honest, once I clicked confirm, I looked at my team and went, I don't need a right back. Why did, why did I buy a right back? But Mallow has come in. Zuniga then got annoyed because I've signed him. And yeah, he's then had a strop, which means his ma he's unhappy with management and very unhappy overall. Hi, Saj, who is also a right back. Not annoyed because of Hugo Mallow, which stupidly, you probably should be. Hi, Saj is annoyed is because he wanted a new contract and I offered him one and he rejected it. And that's my fault. That, that's that's my fault that he rejected the contract I offered. And because he rejected that contract, there's some players like Unas over here, Sepe, Milik, Zielinski, Gulam, Kalajan, Martins. They're, yeah, they're also slightly upset. Which does mean that our cohesion, dressing room atmosphere and managerial support is all dropping. Which is always good. Since the last episode, we've played a couple of games... One in the league against Sampdoria, a 3-0 victory, Dries Mertens, Puerta Zielinski and Arcadius Milik with the goals. And then the return match of the Young Boys Burn game for the Champions League. 2-1 victory, Dries Mertens with both the goals. It does mean we qualify for the Champions League and I'm sure you can already see there from the teams we've drawn. It's not an easy group. Atletico Madrid, Chelsea, Napoli and Slavia Prague in our group. We're not getting through that. There is no way in hell we are getting through that group. So today then, two matches, we're going to do Roma and we're going to do Fiorentina. Roma apparently is a derby game. I don't know the the geography of Italy very well. Is Rome close to Napoli? I, I don't know. I, maybe. It, but it's a derby, apparently. I forgot to show you the league table. We are sat fourth now. We were sat second. Sassuolo and Crotone, or Crotone have both played, won a game and drawn a game. So they've now moved above us and Juventus. So we are at the Roma game, and we are apparently in excellent form. We've played three games, we've won three games. Roma, it's too early to tell. It looks like they've played one and they won it, so I wouldn't say they're in bad form. I'm still trying to get used to the team here. So I mean, so far, I haven't actually had the chance to use Marek Hamšík at all because he's been injured. They say he's fit enough to play. I don't want to risk him. So I, I still don't think I've had the chance to play my strongest lineup. We've also got a lot of injuries, so Luigi Seppe is injured, obviously Hamsik just returned from injury, Maximovic just returning from injury, Amadou Diara just returning from injury, Di Diawara, Amadou Diawara, that's it, not Diara, that's someone else. So the lineup then we're going to go for, for Roma versus Napoli, same formation as before, although we now, we actually have two wingbacks rather than a left winger and a right wingback, we've got two wingbacks. So in goal, Pepe Reina. My my other goalkeepers aren't very good, so Reyna is staying in goal. Back three of Albiol, Koulibaly and Kirishez. Wing backs of Zuniga and Haisaj. Midfield of Zelensky, Jorginho and Allen. And the strikers of Insigne and Dries Mertens. And there we see the starting lineup for Roma. So that's the formation that I think they wanted you to play as Napoli. With the four, four defenders, one defensive midfielder, two midfielders, wingers and a singular striker. But I think with players like Mertens, Insigne, Milik, you've got a lot of players who can play centrally, so you may as well use them centrally. Team talk. Right, I can do these ones. I know how these ones work. Get out there and go out there and enjoy. I expect to win. All the best. Have fun, sure. Assistant can do the individual ones because it's far too complicated for me. And end the team talk. Sure. So this is Roma Stadium. For some reason, all the Serie A games don't seem to have many people attending them. And I don't I don't understand why. 
Like the, you've got these huge stadiums. What's this? The Stadio Olimpico, which is probably like an eighty thousand capacity stadium. There's probably about five thousand people there. Zuniga gets the ball from left back. That wasn't a very good cross at all. Strootman's going to get it clear for Roma. Edin Dzeko. He's been has he been tackled? He's been tackled by multiple people. Koulibaly, Allen, Jorginho. Zuniga's making a lovely run up the left. And I assume Heisaj is making a lovely run up the right. He is now with the ball. Crossing it in. Yes, he does. And it's saved. Why did you save it, Alisson? You didn't need to. Corner to be taken by Insigne. It, it wasn't a very good corner. And Fazio, former Tottenham centre-back, I believe, gets it clear. I think I've changed up my the camera that we're using for this one. Because we were using the director cam and... If I'm honest, there were some camera angles that it just didn't work, so I think I've now gone for just the TV camera. We've got a highlight just before half-time. Jorginho, little back heel, Allen, Insigne, can he have a go from... Well, he's inside the area now, and what was that? What was that, Insigne? That should have gone in. It is half-time. Interestingly, Roma did a sub just before half-time, and I'm not quite sure why. Team analysis, Puerta Zelinski won back possession more than any other player, which is good. Highside's lost it a lot, which isn't good. Number of touches of the ball in the penalty area is good. We haven't scored any goals, so is it good? It's pro I don't think it is. I don't like the way passionately and aggressively are now down here, like next to each other. Because I'm going to do that and just shout angrily at people. Right, assertively, uh, you've been unlucky. You have been unlucky. Assistant do the rest, didn't do anything. They're itching to get out there. Because we're playing on 3D cameras now, I, I still want to put up all the all the like match stats on the side, but I don't really think there's a place for it. Hi Serge, bringing the ball forward, first highlight of the second half. He's been tackled by Kolarov, and we've got a throw on. No, we, we haven't. We've, we've not got a throw on. It doesn't ever seem to tell me when we get an injury. Al Albiol, I, a potential head injury. I don't know how long he's been injured for. Obviously, I can see it tying up here, but I, I like to see... Down here, in this bit here, a nice big, this person's got injured, they were right to play on. I think what happens, it turns up at the top here. And I, I'm not trained to look at that at the moment. Albiol is coming off then for Gustavo Gomez. Who's going to make his debut. And it's probably going to be proven to be a terrible signing. Kolarov with the throw on. Dzeko. Florenzi. Florenzi's a very good player. I'm sure I've said this before in the Southampton save. Defrel. He's been tackled, but it's only gone as far as Florenzi. Ball now to Perez. De Frel. De Rossi, Nyangolan. This is not looking good. This is looking like a Roma highlight. Kolarov, Perotti. Perotti's in the penalty area. De Frel, oh, he's hit it just over. That is lucky. Very lucky. Perez. Florenzi, Perez crosses it in. It was Jekko, but it's cleared. Was that it? That was the whole highlight. 65 minutes, and we're going to do a sub, and we're going to bring on Borja Mayoral. Because we're just not doing a lot going forward. Well, to be honest, look, no one is doing well, unless they've changed the way ratings work. Is a 6.7 good? I'd say that's below average. I'd say a 7 is good. Let's do confirm sub. I don't know why it's down there. Why isn't it up here? It confuses me. Corner for Roma. Florenzi takes. It's cleared by Gomez, only as far as Bruno Perez. Perez in the middle, Nyangolan is there, and Nyangolan has scored. It was always coming. Florenzi takes the corner. Gomez gets it clear. Perez gets it back into the middle. Nyangolan gets through three players and just smashes it low and hard under the goalkeeper, makes it 1-0. Florenzi with the free kick. Bruno Perez has made it too. We're falling apart, and I don't really know why. Oh, it's been disallowed. Dzeko was pushing someone. Good. Can I go... A Attacking? I mean, they're playing much better than us. Let's go counter. Maybe l let's try a counter attack. Let's invite the pressure. Zuniga with a throw. Insigne. Crosses in. Allen's got some space on the edge of the area and he's scored an absolute rocket into the top corner. Four minutes left to play. It is one all. Roma versus Napoli. And Allen has scored the best goal I've ever seen in Football Manager 2018. Insigne's chest down, crosses in, and Allen on the volley. That is special. There's five minutes of injury time, but we've just burnt through most of it. There's 45 seconds left. Florenzi and Yangelan. Schick. Schick with the ball for Roma. That's a good name. I like that name. Ed and Jacko's had an effort. It's got, gone off for a corner. It took a deflection. Are they going to have enough time to take it? 
Florenzi two take. It's cleared by Gomez. Back out to Florenzi. There's nine seconds or so left to go. Heisage heads it back. Once again, Florenzi. De Rossi doesn't get there. Florenzi gets the ball back. He's getting a lot of the ball. Dzeko had an effort and Pepe Reina with a save. And that looks like we're going to get a point against Roma, which is a good point. That is full time then. I can only tell it's full time because everyone stopped doing stuff. I found a bug. So it, up here, it, I'm just stuck being told that Alberto Poloshi scored for Spal in the 90th minute. That's gone away now. Good. So best performer for us was Alan with his goal. That's it. Dries Mertens, zero overall chances. Not one chance. How can you not have a single chance in the entire game? Talk to the team calmly. I'm far from pleased. Yes, they all seem fired up. Let the assistant do the next bit. And the team talk, leave the match. Raul Albiol has gashed his head. Let's send him to the doctor so he's not out forever. He's only out for three days. Gomez makes Napoli debut. Alan impresses for Napoli. And Jurgen Klopp was taking a look at Alan and Jorginho. Get your mitts off, Jurgen. Let's show you a scouting meeting, shall we? So these happen, I think you can configure when they actually take place. So I think I've got them set up to happen every two weeks during a transfer window and every month outside of transfer windows. So this is basically Luigi... Caffarelli has come up with some players for me. So Federico Va Vena Venecio, Venencio, he reckons he's a 65 out of 100. He'll probably might be my seventh best centre back. I don't need him. I'm just, I'm going to acknowledge it. Gelson Martins, 76. So that's pretty good. He is a right winger, which I don't really play right wingers. So I'm just going to acknowledge it. I very rarely discard unless I know I've got no chance in signing him. Like Virgil Van Dijk. Oriel Romu. I'm probably I'm going to discard that one as well. Henry Lansbury. Uh, got a confession to make. I nearly signed Henry Lansbury. Um, <laughs> he was transfer listed, and I thought let's get some English players in, and then I realised it's Henry Lansbury, and there's probably better ones I can get. I'm going to discard that. Josh Kimmich. Sure, not got a chance of getting him. Jack Butland. Not got a chance of getting him. Spinazzoli, Spinazzola even, he's on loan from Juventus to somewhere, let's just acknowledge it. Davide Calabria, sure, he's contracted to AC Milan and they don't want to sell him. So yeah, you get a whole load of these, I've got 12 remaining, I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, well, I will, just not on camera. Um, it's quite good because you don't really get a say in what they find. I think you can force them to scout certain players, but yeah, I mean, he's just found some guy from Utrecht in the Eredivisie. No, in the Jupilia League. It's not even the Eredivisie, it's the one below. Up next, we have Fiorentina, which is in 12 days, as you can see down here. Before that, we do have the transfer window closing. And as you can see here, I have no budget. But I am expecting people to come in for Koulibaly, possibly even Insigne. Barcelona won Insigne. No one wants Hamsik. Calajon's wanted by Manchester United. Jorginho is wanted by Liverpool, Man City and PSG. Allen's wanted by a whole load of people as well. Gulam's wanted by some people. Kirishes is wanted by some people. There's a lot of interest in a lot of my players. So, yeah, I, I can see it might maybe being a busy day. It is transfer deadline day and already six o'clock in the morning. We've got some interest for Koulibaly from Chelsea and from Tottenham. Let's see what offers you're making. 20 million up front. Bonus for winning the FA Cup. Bonus for winning the Champions League. Get rid of those. I want... I mean, he's worth 21, so I want 40. Is that too much to ask? 27, right. That's... You're not... I don't want them. I never want those. Give me 40. They've gone straight in at 40 with a 30% profit. Well, Koulibaly's off. Possibly to Chelsea then. Or maybe Tottenham. Let's see if Tottenham want to do the same thing. Okay, they've gone. Oh no, they've walked away. They've walked away. So, Koulibaly might be off to Chelsea. Also, Derby wanted to loan Zuniga, which I didn't want to do because Zuniga is a team leader and he's part of the core social group. So, losing him is going to be quite a big chunk of of squad morale. I don't know. I, I imagine that just the entire team is just going to implode on itself if he leaves. Well... Koulibaly is off then to Chelsea, £40 million. He's 26 years old, and yes, he was my best centre-back. He's probably one. In fact, yeah, he was my best player. However, I've got a lot of centre-backs. Obviously, Gomez I've signed. Maximovic, who's been injured. Kirishez is still there. Tonelli's still there. Albiol's still there. So I've 
I don't think I need him. I think that's just money that I can take to the bank. I had a chat with Marek Hamsik earlier and he would like to know why he let Koulibaly leave the club. Okay then, this could be some problems. This doesn't have to become a big issue just yet, but I'm disappointed that you felt necessary to sell Kaladu Koulibaly. He was a leader in the dressing room and he will be missed. Sometimes in football, the financial side of things takes over and in this case, the deal was too good to turn down. That's what I'm going to say. Good. He listened. Thanks, Marek. At quarter to five on deadline day, we have made a signing. And I'm... I, I don't know why I do it to myself, but he's he's 20 years old. He's got 13 under-20 caps for Argentina, seven goals, plays for Racing Club. Lautaro Martinez has signed for about £6 million. The only reason why I signed him is if we look on here. Come on, where are you? Come on, there you go. No, come on, come on, come on. He, he's, he's wanted by Real Madrid. So I thought if they want him, he must be good. His current ability is three-star. His potential was four stars, so uh, yeah, his, it's not the worst signing. I'm I'm happy with that. He's only on eighteen grand a week as well. Oh, and that's the end of the transfer window. It is cl- it is closed, and we are the biggest spenders. Oh, and we spent most of it on Hugo Malo. How did we spend twenty one and a half million pounds? What did we buy? Oh yeah, Gustavo Gomez, Borja, Mayoral, Hugo Malo, and Martinez. I can't pronounce his first name. Players who left. Giancarini, oh Maggio left for not a lot of money, and Koulibaly also left the club. Well, the dressing room atmosphere doesn't look good on transfer deadline day. It's poor, but it is rising. Why is it rising? Does it tell me? There has been a slight improvement in club atmosphere recently. Cool. I don't know why that is, but okay. The hierarchy is there, so Milik has moved from the other players into the influential players. Nothing else seems to have happened. Fine. And we've got two social groups now. So we've got the core core social group, which is most people. Secondary social group is made up of players who are a similar age and have spent a similar period of time at the club. I think they're both like 17. Yeah, Zerbin is 18 and Delasandro has just turned 17. And then others, Gomez, Mayoral, Martinez and Malo, players that have just joined. Let's go forward then to the Fiorentina game and hopefully we can keep this unbeaten run going. Hold on, I've just got an achievement of what a goal. Did I win Did I win goal of the month? I think Alan won goal of the month. He did win goal of the month. Alan, well done. Thanks, boss. Good job, Alan. This is a nice little screen. Um, So, top five highest spending leagues, Premier Division, £161 million. Then Serie A with just £38 million. The Championship of 12 and a, 12.25, Spanish First Division 2.9, German First Division 1.7. I guess that's probably more because most teams don't have much of a transfer budget because in real life they've they've spent it so no one has much man city biggest spenders 50 then chelsea on 40 then us on 21 and a half leicester and man city manchester united sorry on 12 and a bit and 12 the international break is over a few people came back with slight injuries which seems like a new thing they brought into the game so i think Milik came back with a tight hamstring and someone came back with a tight calf so they're not injured injured, they're just not 100%, which I quite like. I think against Fiorentina, we actually have the opportunity to play our strongest side. Obviously, Koulibaly has now left, but we do have the return of Gulam. We have the return of Hamsik as well, so I think we're in a pretty good position. The starting lineup then is as follows in goal, Pepe Reina. Back four, Maximovic comes in to replace Koulibaly. Albiol returns from his damaged head and Kirichez rounds off the back three. The fullbacks are Haisaj and Gulam, midfield of Jorginho, Hamšík and Allen, who scored the wonder goal last time out, strike force of Insigne and Mertens. I'm wondering whether I should stop playing Insigne as a track retista, play him as something else, like a false nine. Maybe? Let's try him as a false nine. Maybe I should try him as a winger, but I, I don't want to try it. Oh, do I? Is that is this a strange thing to do? Is that <laughs> is is this a good? Oh, this could end horrifically badly. Inside forward on support. In, inside forward on attack. Go on attack. There we go. This could end badly. Can you get in the middle? Why am I doing this? Because it's a new game. I don't have a. This is my formation, and this is what I know will work. So I just play about and make a mess. Martinez needs a squad number. Number eleven. Sure, you can get a nice fancy number. So that lineup there looks a bit of a mess, doesn't it? Um, the Fiorentina side looks... That's fairly standard for most Italian teams, I think. 
My only complaint about that last screen is it doesn't stay on there for long enough. Like, I don't control it. So it just kind of pops up, some text turns up along the bottom, kind of like, uh, like pre-match commentary. And then once that's over, it disappears, and I'd like the ability to keep that page on there longer so I can actually look and analyse their team. Team talk, calmly... Um, it's over to you now. And then assistant does that. No one cared. No one cared about these things. Oh, look at that. Look at that fancy view, everyone having huddles. Fiorentina obviously in the purple, we are in our traditional light blue, sky blue, light blue, blue. We're wearing blue. High Saj tackles, comes forward with the ball down the right hand side. He's got two Fiorentina players there. He's been tackled and that'll end the highlight. With Hamsik back in the side, I'm hoping we start to see a little bit better attack in football. Because at the moment, I keep seeing like positive news about Mertens and Insigne getting in the box and getting a lot of chances, but they're not scoring them. So I'm hoping that Hamsik gets them in the box and give, gives them a lot of chances and they do score. Fiorentina coming forward. He's gone for one from outside the area. It's gone well wide. Why are our seats pink? Why are Napoli's seats pink? What's going on there? Half time then. Nil, nil. I, look, at our, look at our stadium. This is, It looks fancy. It looks really nice. So far, looking at the stats, we've been getting battered. Um, How do we not get battered? Team talk, aggressively, I'm not happy. Hand over to the assistant, didn't really say much. Just do so, like Mertens again, 6.3. Is it because I'm not, I'm playing him out of position? Is that the problem here? Do I go strikerless? Is that something I can try? I shouldn't try it, should I? Jorginho's gone and got himself injured. What is up, buddy? Potential foot injury, run it off. Free kick for Fiorentina, it's straight in the back of the net. 1-0 down. So the game's off camera, I do really well in. The game's on camera, I don't. And it, I don't know, it happens every time like this, doesn't it? Right, let's go counter, because we're not having any chances. They had 10 shots to our one. What have I done? What have I done? No, pitch. There we go. Fiorentina coming forward again with the ball. Shazer with an effort, it's gone just wide. Is it a corner? It is a corner. Corner comes in, it's cleared by Hamsik. Only as far as Chiesa. David Astori. Back out to Badej. Bad Badelj. Okay, fine. End the highlight there. 75 minutes on the clock. And Mertens is coming off for Milik. Milik can go into a complete forward on attack. In Sydney, maybe we just have you just there. Can you play there? You can play there. You can come off now. I don't know what I'm doing. Hamsik. Now be an advanced playmaker on support. Maybe. I don't know. What formation is that? Confirm changes. There we go. I don't know what I'm doing here. Insigne's gone and got himself injured as well. And then I sub him. Great. Free kick for Fiorentina. And it's gone in. And I don't know what the camera angle's showing. Albiol has scored an own goal. Really? What was up with the camera angle? I don't know. But it's a beta. Remember, it's a beta. So, a Seric with a cross and Albiol... Just heads it in. Why, why did you do that? Milik coming forward. There's a minute and a bit left to go. And another red card. So this is something I didn't point out actually. In the games between episodes, two red cards happened. They, they need to fix this. There's quite a lot of red cards happening. Not for me, just in general. R Albiol scored a goal. What? It's saying goal Real Albiol at the top. If Albiol scores now, Alan's had a go. Alan scored. Okay. <laughs> What's happening? It says Albiol, but it wasn't Albiol. It was it was Alan. It's 2-1. I don't think there's enough time to score another goal. Alan did look a little bit offside. We're into injury injury time now, and I don't think anything's going to happen unless we get the ball now. Or now, we're not getting the ball. It's going to be a 2-1 defeat to Fiorentina. Jorginho with a tackle. Jorginho has gone through the back of him. Probably should have got sent off for that. Still on the pitch. Chaser crosses it in. It's cleared by Kirish as it is full time. And it is a 2-1 defeat. And I'm wondering... It's my formation, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's my formation. That's the problem. Assistant, you do it. What did you say? To all players, you were not good enough today. That was the sort of match we should be winning. And sure, and you didn't actually shout at anyone individually. Do I try that as my formation? 
Ignore the players that are in there, they might change. It might be Hamshik moves up to there. But that gives Gulam and Haisaj the ability to run into the space. We've got the link between the strikers and the midfielders. I quite, I quite like the look of that. That's going to do it for this episode. The next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Torino and then Chelsea in the Champions League. I'm, I'm kind of glad we've got an English club because I wanted to play an English side just to see how well they've done. I've just realised koulibaly has gone to Chelsea, hasn't he? We're going to see Koulibaly against us. Great. That'll be fun. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2018 with Napoli. If you did enjoy, please leave a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And I will see you next time for Torino and for Chelsea. <laughs>